Hey guys, I'm Tom the Tech Chap and I've got two 4K monitors on my desk and one of them uses an IPS panel, the other a TN. So I've been using LG monitors for a while now. You've probably spotted the huge 38 inch ultra wide I usually have on my desk. But for this video, I've swapped it out for these two 4K monitors as LG got in touch and asked if I wanted to make a video showing the differences between IPS and TN monitors. I should just quickly mention that there is a third type of panel, VA, but for this video, I'm just focusing on the two most common, IPS and TN, but I will be making a separate monitor buying guide video soon where I'll talk about VA as well. So the thing is, when you're comparing TN with IPS, when you're sat right in front of them, which I suppose you would be normally when you're using a computer monitor like this, there's not a night and day difference between them. TN is still a good option. But you can see differences in contrast and gamma, and of course the color accuracy isn't quite on the same level, but the biggest difference really is with viewing angles. So this is the Samsung TN, and looking straight on, it's not too bad at all, but once you start changing the angle that you look at it, the color drops off, we get a really strong sort of red hue to it, you can see the yellowy red, completely unnatural. And it's the same thing if you stand up above it. In fact, the funny thing is, on this particular monitor, Samsung also have added in a menu feature called Samsung Magic Angle, which is uh, sort of to compensate for the TN issues with lean back mode, but it really isn't ideal unless you are sitting straight in front of it. But then even then, as I've got the two monitors here, the uh, Samsung TN's looking a little red, it's not quite as color accurate. Now, if we do the same thing with the IPS LG monitor, and once again, change the angle that you're looking at it, you can see that it maintains the color accuracy and the brightness to a much higher degree than the Samsung. Obviously it's still dipping a little bit there, but we're not seeing any of that orangey yellow look. Even at this sort of super wide angle, it's still actually uh, pretty accurate. And that really is a benefit, especially if you're gonna be using this in a multi-monitor setup. If you've got two or three of them, having the color shift of a TN is not gonna be ideal. So even if TN looks okay sometimes, any adjustment to the angle really has a big impact on the quality of the picture you get. And if we go to a, well, slightly unrealistic angle, but we go above it, you can see the huge difference between the IPS, which has kept its brightness and colors, that all looks good, compared to the, just the mess that is the TN. Now this isn't Samsung's fault, this isn't a result of the particular Samsung monitor, it's just the shortcomings of that TN panel, which just does not offer the view angles that you want for a monitor, especially when it's 4K. One of the other big differences between TN and IPS, supposedly, is the response time and input lag. And in the past, this has always been the case. Generally with TN, you'd get a lower response time, lower input lag, and so you'd get less of what you call ghosting, when you sort of maybe about to catch a bit of uh, a delay in the picture on the screen, and also the input lag of when you click the mouse or press a key, and then that translates to actually something happening on the monitor. Historically, TNs have always been faster, but recent IPS monitors have been much better to the point where good IPS monitors can be almost, if not as fast, as a TN. So let's put it to the test, and I'm using this Leo Bodner input lag tester, measuring both input lag and response time, combining it into a single lag score, and we want the lowest number possible. See how low we can get it, 10.1 I saw briefly. That's the score to beat. So let's now jump over to the IPS. So this is actually faster. It has a lower combined input lag and response time than this Samsung TN panel. So once again, I should say that this is not representative of all monitors on the market. I'm just testing this particular LG and Samsung. So it's not been the same case across the board and panel quality does change, but that is a surprising result. Traditionally, people think that TNs are always faster than IPS, and that's just proven that it isn't. The LG is actually almost a whole millisecond quicker than the TN. Now, chances are, if you are looking at buying a new 4K monitor, like one of these for the extra sharpness and pixel density, then color accuracy is also gonna be important to you, especially if you're photo or video editing, or even just watching movies and playing games. So let's see how they compare. And using a colorometer, the LG IPS does come out on top. This particular model covers 100% of the sRGB and 81% of the Adobe RGB color gamuts. That's pretty good, but surprisingly, this TN isn't too far behind. 
with 97% sRGB and 77% Adobe RGB. So between the two of them, the IPS is more color accurate. And so I would be more confident editing my videos on it, knowing what I'm seeing on the screen is representative of how it should look. But what helps this particular IPS to stand out is the fact that it's using one of LG's Nano IPS panels, which according to LG helps deliver more accurate colors, it covers more of the DCI-P3 color standard, and it also supports high dynamic range. For most of us then, IPS is definitely the best option, especially these LG Nano IPS panels which are among the best on the market. But there is one key advantage to TN, and that's the price. This particular Samsung monitor will set you back about £300. This LG is close to 480 Now you can get cheaper models of this LG and it does also support high dynamic range. So is it worth paying more for IPS? Well, in my opinion, yeah, it definitely is. And also if you can stretch a little bit more, try and go for a 32 inch monitor if you have your heart set on a 4K panel to really take advantage of the extra sharpness. But at the end of the day, it does all come down to your budget. So I hope you found this video useful, and as I say, there are also VA panels to consider, but I'll talk more about that in another video soon. But let me know what monitor you're using right now, and whether you're happy with it, or maybe you're looking to upgrade. Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. I'll catch you next time right here on The Tech Chat.